Hey guys, welcome back to Pop 'em Up Chem. And in this lesson, we're going to be looking at moles and mass, the relationship between them, carrying on the pathway that we started last lesson. So make sure you've got something to work on, a calculator, and let's see what we've got. So hopefully by the end of today's lesson, we're going to be developing the link between these two concepts, and you're going to be applying that and you're going to be able to competently and confidently do some calculations using them. Little question based on last lessons to pause the video here and have a go at. So with this question, the first thing we need to realize is that it's asking for the number of hydrogen atoms present and it's H2O. So there's two hydrogen atoms per molecule. So we're going to use our equation from the last video, which is number of molecules over Avogadro's number. So we're going to do two times the number of molecules of water because there's two hydrogen per molecule divided by Avogadro's number, which equals 20 moles. So we talked about and introduced the mole as a kind of concept and a number last lesson, an insanely large number at that. But the real significance of what the mole is, is its ability to allow us to relate different concepts. Now, we related number of particles to moles last lesson, and today we're going to be looking at how we can relate the mass, that's mass in grams, and molar mass together with moles. And this is, again, part of our moles journey, our calculations journey. Using the periodic table is going to be key to us doing this successfully. So let's break down what all this is about. So if we take the case of lithium, we see we've got the number three um, on the kind of above the symbol, which is the atomic or proton number. That tells us the number of protons there are. And below we have this decimal, 6.94. This is the mass number. And the reason it's a decimal is because on this periodic table, it's taking into account the percentage of naturally occurring different isotopes of that element. So there's clearly different isotopes of lithium that occur naturally. For those who don't know, an isotope is an element with the same number of protons or an atom with the same number of protons, but a different mass number, a different number of neutrons. So we're going to be using that mass number to help us determine the mass of the different molecules and atoms that we might be looking at in questions. So now we know that that decimal number, that number at the bottom is our atomic mass. How can we use that to work out the molecular or molar mass? So we can use methane CH4 as an example. All we have to do to work this out is combine the atomic mass of carbon and all of the hydrogen atoms present. So that's 12.01 plus 4 times 1.01 equals 16.05. And that's the molar mass. And that is units of grams per mole. Now we can use MR and MM interchangeably in truth, but there are subtle differences in their definition, which we'll look at. But if you use either of these symbols interchangeably, you won't lose any marks. So as described before, atomic mass was just the number that we get from the periodic table. Now, molecular mass is the sum of all of those atomic masses, and it is technically dimensionless. Molar mass is the molecular mass in grams, and this has a unit, as I said before, of grams per mole. However, since the new definition of the mole I don't think there's a meaningful distinction to be made between these two, and you can use either whenever you like. I will often use MR when I'm just sketching and writing down because that's what I used when I learned. So last lesson, we looked at the relationship between the number of particles and Avogadro's number. That was number of moles equals number of particles over Avogadro's number. Now we're gonna look at the relationship between moles and mass. So the number of moles is equal to mass over molar mass. So N, just as it did in the previous lesson, is 
the number of moles and that has the unit of moles. M, small m is mass and that is in grams. Make sure you recognize that it's in grams and molar mass is in grams per mole. This can be written as MR, like I said, they're interchangeable in my opinion. This is of fundamental importance. This equation is going to govern a lot of what we're doing over the next few lessons. And it really is the bread and butter of getting started with quantitative chemistry. So let's have a look at a couple of simple e examples. Here in this first example, I've kind of highlighted the important information. It's asking us how many moles of water that are present in 27.3 grams. So the first thing we're going to need is we're going to need the molar mass. So the molar mass we can get for your periodic table. Please make sure you have your periodic table ready. We're gonna do two times the atomic mass of hydrogen plus one times the atomic mass of oxygen equals 18.02. And then we're just gonna use the equation that we just outlined mass over molar mass and the information given in the question to get 27.03 divided by 18.02 which gives us 1.5 moles so let's have a look at another example here we're looking for mass in this question so we're going to have to do some rearranging but it's still not a particularly difficult question so we've got iron oxide so always going to need to calculate our molar mass so of our molar mass of iron oxide, we take the atomic mass of iron, which we look at our periodic table as 55.85, multiply it by two and add that to three times the atomic mass of oxygen, which is 16. That gives us 159.7 grams per mole. We know our equation is mass over molar mass. We want mass by itself. So we multiply through by molar mass to get mass is equal to number of moles times molecular mass. And then we just plug in our values, which is 4.4 times 159.7, which equals 703 grams. Okay then, so it's time for you to have a go at some questions. First question, you're looking for the molar mass. Pause the video. Pop them up. So in this question, we're looking for molar mass. So we're going to rearrange our equation to get molar mass by itself. So we get molar mass equals mass over moles. And then we're just going to use the information from the question. So we've got 20.9 grams divided by 1.3 moles is going to give us answer in grams per mole and it's gonna be 16.1 grams per mole. So hopefully you did all right in these questions, but really you need a lot of practice with this. So we can begin this practice with these questions here. Try and work through all six of these questions, test your application before you carry on with the video and check the answers. Pause the video and give yourself a few moments for that. So. Hopefully that's gone okay, but don't worry if you've struggled with a few of them. Let's have a little look. Pop our equation up at the top. First one, we're calculating mass. So I'm gonna calculate the molar mass of benzene first, and then I'm going to rearrange the equation and multiply it by the number of moles to give me my mass, which equals 7.812 grams. For the next one, it's mass again, so it's going to be moles times molar mass so i'm going to work out my molar mass of my ammonium nitrate that's nitrogen plus four times hydrogen plus nitrogen again plus three times oxygen completely fine if you'd noticed there was two nitrogen here as well and done that and then i just multiply that by the number of moles which gives me 60.0 grams now I'm looking at quantity, so it's asking me about moles. If you see quantity, it's asking for moles. So the first thing I'm going to do, as usual, is calculate the molecular mass of my iron oxide. Now, in this question, I've got to be a little bit careful because it gives us the mass in kilograms. So I know that my mass is going to be 1000 grams. Make sure you do the conversion. So I do 1000 divided by my molar mass 
which is 6.26 moles. Question four, again, we're looking for moles. So I'm gonna calculate my molar mass of cobalt chloride, which is two times 35.4 plus 58.93. And then I'm just gonna divide my mass by that number, which gives me a total of 0 0.0184 moles. Next, we're calculating the molar mass. So that's going to be mass divided by moles. So I convert my mass into grams and divide it by the number of moles. Nice and easy, 1410 over 8.8 .8 is 160 grams per mole. Now, lastly, we've got a two part. This is asking us to deduce the formula. So slightly more tricky, but the main part of the question is the same. We need to find the molecular mass again. So we're going to do the mass that they've given us in the question divided by the number of moles. This gives us 34 grams per mole. But that's not the end of the question because it tells us that we have an oxide of hydrogen. So we have oxygen add hydrogen. So we know the mass of both of those is 16 or and 1 or 16 1.1. So we know we'd have to multiply them both by two to get the overall molecular mass equal to the sum of all of the atomic masses. That's gonna give us an overall formula of H2O2 or hydrogen peroxide as it's better known. Don't worry if you struggled with this last one, it was a tough cookie to get started with and you'll improve over time. So. Now, in our journey, we've done two components. We looked at number of particles, mass and molar mass, and we've linked them all to moles. So we're well on our way in this journey through seeing how moles links all of these physical states of matter together. So what's next? Well, there's no other accompanying videos for this one, and there's no practical work or practical videos to go alongside it either. What you do want to be doing is making sure you're getting lots of practice doing the worksheets as this is a key skill and you really, really, really need to be slick at it so that you can continue with confidence. Thanks for watching, guys. Like, subscribe, share the channel. And as always, practice makes slightly better.